Hello everybody, my name is Monica and I am here to teach you a workshop on uh, how to go from pain, from chronic pain in your body to deep sense of connection and how to learn how, what your body really needs to feel good every day. So it's a big topic, I totally understand you would be like, whoa, what is she going to be teaching us? But I want to give you some really simple, uh, easy to follow steps that will put you on that route, on that uh, road of reclaiming your body for yourself, of actually reclaiming your health, your empowerment, and connecting deeply with your body so that you can understand that you are your own healer and you are the one who truly knows what you need. So this is my mission. Like I said, my, ma my name is Monica and my last name is Zumilek. All right, it's a mouthful, I know. So you can call me Monica. Uh, I have been treating people uh, in chronic pain for over 15 years and I've learned a lot from that. Uh, it's a passion of my life to be helping others. And um, now I wanted to take it out and um, show people the steps where they can actually become their own therapists and where they can actually become their own healers. So this workshop is going to be your roadmap for regaining that sense of well-being and empowerment in your body. So I'm very excited that you're here. Thank you so much for watching this, for participating. Uh, please join me in the chat. Um, tell me where you're from and also what your expectations are. What is that you really most struggle in your body with? What is that you most struggle when it comes to health, when it comes to your vitality? I would love to hear from you. So uh, please connect and um, let's begin. <laughs> All right. Um, so like I said, I've been uh, working with people in chronic pain for over uh, 15 years. And there is one very important thing that I've learned. Um, the number one thing that I noticed over the years of working with clients was that those who really win at this game of reclaiming their health, of reclaiming their empowerment, are the ones that are taking things in their own hands. Meaning, um, if a patient or a client comes to me and they're really eager to treat themselves, to uh, create routines, to um, incorporate self-treatment methods that I would teach them into their life every day, they are guaranteed success. I know that they will get better and I know that they will create a life of health and vitality. So this is why I wanted to bring this um, roadmap for you where you can start doing the same thing without even having to uh, see a therapist. Unless you know you are somebody who's really in a lot of pain, in a lot of discomfort and you really don't know where to start. Um, yes, you may want to seek help. And I also want to uh, put a disclaimer here, none of the information or uh, guidance that I'm going to be teaching you today is, should be construed as medical advice or diagnosis. That's very important. This is uh, for you to be reclaiming your own uh, health in your hands, but also learning how to connect with your body, how to connect with your body's intuitive wisdom. So if you may need some help from a professional, you will know that you do, okay? So I'm here to teach you how to connect with your body today. And just a few words with, you know, about myself. Um, why did I become a therapist? Uh, so from early age, I've been struggling with um, problems with my health and I've been um, on many different medications since childhood. I've lost my strength. My digestive system was a real problem. I wasn't getting enough nutrition. And over the years, because I really knew that there is something that I can do to get healthier, to empower myself, I started to really look at 
different modalities, uh, different health um, strategies, uh, different uh, health approaches and learning because I wanted to learn what can I do for myself, right? So over the many years as I um, became a patient and then a therapist, my life started to change. My health became so much more powerful, so much more um, um, good and so much better. <laughs> That's what I wanted to say, right? So my health became better, but I also felt that sense of empowerment and connection with my body. So this is what I'm going to be teaching you today, how to connect with your body, how to reclaim your power, and how to use simple, easy techniques that you can apply every day to keep on doing this work. Sounds okay? Sounds good? Well, I am excited to start on this journey with you. Um, so today, let's start with um, those few questions that I wanted to ask you. Um, do you know how your body communicates with you? Do you know your body language? Um, what are the ways that the body can communicate? Hmm. Well, we can think of pain, of discomfort, or sensations of tightness, restriction, right? A soreness. If you go and exercise next day, you may feel really sore. So you know that your body is telling you well, wow, you know, maybe I did too much or maybe my muscles are um, growing. So I'm feeling some of that discomfort and um, pain right now. So these are sort of negative ways, right? And we usually focus on pain because the way um, the human body is constructed is that um, pain is a, the sensation that will get our attention the fastest. And that's why we have pain because there is emergencies and there is situations where we need to be alarmed to change so that our body is not um, being uh, threatened. So that's many times we can save our lives, right? So pain has a very important um, value and a very important role in our lives and in our health. However, uh, because pain is so powerful, it grabs our attention. And sometimes uh, what happens, we forget that the body communicates in multiple ways. There's a huge range and variety of the ways our body communicates with us. Okay? So, body communication. And I just wanted to say that um, if you feel like, well, I'm going to be giving you a lot of information and maybe it's hard to follow. Um, first of all, you'll be able to watch this video as many times as you want and follow all the information that I'm giving you. But also I have a, a PDF document attached to this um, site. So you'll be able to um, open it up and um, read it and um, you'll get that information in there as well. Okay, so don't worry. You can definitely take notes, um, but also refer to the PDF. And I'm also going to be talking about uh, many different other ways to connect with me and to reach out for help that uh, we offer. So just enjoy. Um, follow along with me, okay? That's what I would like you to do. And don't worry if some information may be sort of um, escaping you or be over your head. So, so let's get back to that uh, topic number one today, connecting with our bodies, right? What are the sensations? What are the ways that the body talks to us? And if you want to drop me some comments, I would love that. Um, there's chat in the Zoom video, so um, please. And if you're watching this after, after the live and if you're watching the recording, please um, connect with me um, via your learning platform because I would love to hear your comments. So what are the ways that body communicates? So like we talked, there is pain. However, uh, pain is not the only sensation. Let's focus on this big array 
um, on so many other sensations that our body also experiences. There's a sensation of pleasure, of satiation, of feeling good, of feeling relaxed, soft, um, of feeling just full of vitality, full of breath, ah, full of space. Um, of feeling vital, of feeling like your body's thriving, like you can run a mile or run a hundred miles because you got this energy empowering you. Um, there is a sensation of being energized, of wanting to go out and let your body express itself. Um, I could talk about it forever. So what I want you to do is um, just think about it, jot down if you have pen and paper with you, which would be great. Uh, jot down a few sensations that are positive, okay? Um, and I would also invite you just, if you wanna grab some paper and some um, writing uh, tools, uh, just get it uh, really quick and participate with me or you can write on your computer, you know? Um, either way, but it will be helpful if you have something to write on. So, sorry I should have mentioned that at the beginning. Um, so, um, let's reframe the way we connect with our body. Let's reframe from always seeking pain, from always asking, oh, where is my pain? What does that mean? Let's reframe our connection with our body to also being able to feel good, to notice and um, appreciate those positive feelings, experiences, sensations that our body is giving us. So this is step number one, reframing how we pay attention to our body, okay? And asking ourselves, being a student, what is my body's language? We all are very unique. Okay, we all have our very unique um, individual way of connecting with our body. It's never the same, all right? Um, it's never the same for every person. Um, so, number one, connecting with our body, understanding its language. Um, so, number two, using breathing to connect. Um, if you've ever done meditation, if you've ever done yoga or exercise, you know how powerful breath is. And with this um, approach that I'm going to be teaching you today, we don't necessarily control our breath. We're not focusing on <sighs> that taking deep breaths and releasing and so that we really kind of just trying to force our body to do something. We just use our breath as a anchor, okay? So as I'm gonna be teaching you some techniques today, think about using your breath as an anchor into your body. So just being aware that you're breathing. You're breathing constantly. You never stop breathing. If you stop breathing, you know that. And it can probably only last for a few seconds. So breath is number one primal uh, method of bringing ourselves to connection with our body, okay? And as I will be teaching you, connecting with our body is number one in reclaiming our power as our own healers, okay? Step number three, and don't worry if it's a lot because we're gonna be going through that. I'm gonna teach you some exercises. So we'll come back to the breath. Step number three, very important. Start to teach yourself and refocus to connecting with your body as a whole. Because of our medical system, because of our, how we're trained um, in that scientific model where we look at everything as compartments, as pieces and parts, 
rather than looking at the whole, we often, I think, are trained and we train ourselves to look at um, just pieces and fragments of our body, parts of our body, okay? And I say fragments because I um, truly believe and experience that our body is a connected system. Um, it is a system that always works together, okay? We have, I think, 30 trillion cells in our body. Imagine that those cells have to work together to keep you alive. So there is this powerful communication system um, well, well, well beyond our intellectual understanding, our intellectual comprehension, well beyond the science um, that we have today in our uh, culture. And that powerful um, wisdom and awareness and um, that powerful, um, I don't even know what to call it, that power in our body of actually keeping us alive is a power of connection. All the cells have to be connected to each other, have to be communicating. Our body's always working together. We cannot separate it in pieces. So as you will be learning to become your own healer, to reclaiming that health, um, and vitality and power in your body, you'll be learning to connect with your body as a whole, to connect with your body as this beautiful, um, powerful system that always works together, all right? So we have three steps, right? We have understanding, understanding sensations and expanding the range of sensations we have on the body. Um, using breathing, looking at the body as a connected system. And then there's step number four and my favorite, okay? Um, step number four is using the power of visualization, of seeing, sensing, feeling, and really seeing in front of our eyes, in front of our imaginary eyes, uh, what we want to achieve and how we want our body to feel and how we want our body to be. That power of visualization cannot be um, overvalued. It's powerful. It's extremely important. Um, it's the key to healing. And um, you've probably heard about all those um, miraculous healings where people were able to heal themselves from uh, years of pain, from severe injuries, from, um, you know, um, severe accidents where they lost um, um, control over their bodies. So you probably heard those. And um, what I want to um, emphasize is that I'm not going to be teaching you how to become this miraculous healer that you can, you know, um, counteract the laws of physics. Because yes, there is reality. If somebody has a broken bone or um, if uh, somebody has an, um, you know, extreme accident and severs the spinal cord, yes, it compromises the body. And honestly, I'm not teaching anybody to visualize suddenly becoming healthy. However, um, the power of visualization is real, okay? So I'll be teaching you through our simple methods that we're gonna go through, through our simple techniques, um, how to start to tune in and how to start to practice that inner vision that inner eye that can see your body healthy, that can see your body getting that beautiful energy, that light, that vitality, um, and expelling what's negative. That is so powerful, and I just cannot overstress that, how this will be really changing your relationship with your body, okay? So we have those four steps, and you can refer to your PDF, please. Um, so we got, um, discerning sensations in our body, uh, what we experience and feel, using breathing, 
feeling and connecting with our body as a whole, as a connected system. And step number four, visualization as a powerful healing tool. Okay. So um, I'm going to, uh, in a few minutes, guide you through our first um, uh, short um, experiential session. Okay. It's not going to take a long time, but I trust that you have some um, quiet space here uh, that you're not driving or <laughs> that you're not, you know, out there and doing um, that you're not able to find uh, that quiet space right now. If you're not, you can always come back to this recording and um, listen to it now, and then you can come back to it. You can do it on your own or you can rewatch and um, participate with me. So I would love for you to have something to write on a pen and paper handy, or you can write on your phone or your computer. It doesn't matter. But it will be important to be able to jot down a few um, responses that, to questions I'm going to give you at the end of this experience. Okay, so um, take a minute and I'm going to check the chat here. Hello, everybody. I see that there's a few people who joined. I so appreciate you. I see that you are from Arizona and from California and uh, from, um, let's see, Idaho. Uh, exciting. Well, thank you so much for joining. And uh, like I said, please use the comments, use the chat. Um, let me know what you are experiencing and if you have any questions um, and also connect with me. So um, I hope you all have your pen and paper ready. Um, and hopefully you have some space where you can relax. So I'm going to invite you to, if you can, um, lay down on the floor, um, on a carpet. If you have a yoga mat, even better. You can also lay down on the bed or a couch, um, or you can stay sitting, especially if you have a comfortable, if you have a, a chair or armchair where you can relax, because this is going to be a bit of a guided meditation. Uh, and I want you to be relaxed and not thinking about, um, you know, being uncomfortable. All right, great. So fantastic. So let's have you lay down if you can. I'm going to be sitting so you can um, see me and ah, we're talking about the breath. So just if you're on the floor or if you're sitting, just kind of shake your body a little bit. All right, roll it a little bit. Allow yourself to just take a few gentle breaths. Ah, exhaling, just feeling that you are actually invited to go deeper. You are invited to connect with your body. <sighs> have this as an invitation from me as a permission to take this time to truly honor your body you're carving out a few minutes out of your day because you want to be healthier because you want to create that positive experience of being embodied on this planet, in this body. Honor yourself for doing that. Honor your body for taking you on this beautiful life's journey, for serving you as your connection to others, as your connection to the earth as your connection to life. Honor your body for keeping you alive every single second, every single moment for breathing, for bringing energy into all the cells, for working tirelessly without often much reward 
So treat this as a reward for your body for being such a powerful supporter of you. So let's take another few breaths. And we talked about visualization and seeing things the way we want them, seeing our body, our health, the way we want to see it. I'm going to take you on the journey of creating your goals. Hmm. Creating and visualizing your goals. And it's not going to be about my goal is to not be late to work tomorrow or my goal is to um, not be late to pick up my kid from school or whatever other goals you may have urgently or my goal is to not burn my um, lunch that I've been cooking. <laughs> That's often my goal, by the way, personally. All right, let's go back to our breathing. The goals are something much more powerful, something that sets your day. The goals are essential because we have to be conscious, we have to practice, become conscious of what our goals and intentions are. Without that consciousness, we're just taken for a ride by whatever happens. We lose our power. So we're all about empowerment here, about empowering yourself, empowering your, um, empowering yourself to take control of your health. So number one in that empowerment will be setting your goals and your intention consciously. But oftentimes we truly don't know what our goals should be what our goals are. We follow, we let others tell us, oh yeah, you should want this, you should want that, you should want that house, you should want that car, you should want that body shape, you should um, want to lose that many pounds, you should want to blah, blah, blah. It's not your goals, it's just the chatter that comes to you. What I will help you do today is actually know what your true goals are, or at least set you on that path, on that journey of learning what your true goals are. So as you're relaxing on the floor or sitting, taking out a few breaths, <sighs> relax, let go. And I want you to, as you're breathing consciously, I want you to scan your body. Imagine you taking yourself on a journey through your body. You're scanning your body from the tip of your head down through your face, through your neck, through your shoulders, arms, fingers, down through your chest, rib cage down into your waist, into your hips, into your pelvis, down to the tunnels of your legs, going all the way to your toes and feet, the soles of your feet. And as you breathe in, imagine that you are expanding that connective web of your body. And as you're breathing out, allow all that breath, all that oxygen to come out or all that air come out of your body, come out of your feet, come out of the pores of your skin, letting go, forgetting everything and now taking another deep breath, filling yourself up completely, filling yourself up to the boundaries of your skin. Feeling your body expanding like a balloon. Feeling your skin starting to radiate and seep in that oxygen that you bring in it. Beautiful. 
So keep on feeling, keep on staying with that image of breath filling up your body, of your body as this connected web of tissues, of tendons, of muscles, of blood vessels, of nerves, of bones, big and small, all of them connected, working together, all of them interacting, communicating with each other at all times. Become fascinated by that inner world as you take deep breaths. Imagine you're breathing some loving energy into your body and that encouragement energy. Hey body, yes, I'm going to now listen to you. I'm going to start learning how to listen, how to love you and how to collaborate with you. So as you breathe in and you feel that deep connection with your body as this web, as this beautiful communication system of cells, feel that expansiveness as you breathe in without thinking, ask yourself, what do I want? and breathe out without thinking no answers yet let everything go and then again as you breathe in again fill your entire body with breath up to the boundaries of your skin and beyond now imagine a bubble around your body you're breathing and expanding through your skin into the bubble of your energy field a few inches off your body or you can make it bigger imagine visualize see your body expanding into that energy field breathe out let go and again as you breathe in into that space of expansiveness ask yourself what do I want what do I truly want what do I want and let go breathe out let everything out What do I want? And again, a deep breath in connection with that bubble of your body and your energy field expand as far as you want to go. Without forcing, without controlling your breath, allow that air to expand you. Visualize it, see it. Don't work on it. Don't force it. Just use that power of your visualization to expand beyond the boundaries of your body with no effort and with no force. Trust your breath and trust your body. And as you breathe in, ask yourself, what do I truly want? What do I truly want? Feel all the cells in your body talking, asking, what do I want? What do I truly want? Imagine your body asking itself deeply inside of it. What do I truly want? And then let go. forget everything so this is a practice you can do you can do it every day um, you can do it for longer but you can also do it for just a few seconds and to bring yourself back into reconnecting and into setting intentions that are conscious and 
But for now, because we have a lot of stuff to talk about, I'm going to invite you to just um, come back into your body, into the boundaries of your physical body. Take another deep breath, feel the shape of your body. As you exhale, let everything go. Forget about everything that we've been talking about so far. You'll come back to it. Let go, relax, and I'm going to invite you to shake yourself up a little bit. If you're sitting, you can stay sitting. If you're laying down, uh, I would like you to sit up, find a comfortable place, grab your um, writing materials, your journal or um, your piece of paper, whatever you have, or your phone. Um, grab a pen and pencil. And what I would like you to do right now as you're still in this relaxed space, um, I want you to just jot down the answers that come, the first answer that comes to your mind to the question, what do I truly want? If something came up for you, if that was uh, a word, write it down. If something's coming up now, just write it down. Don't censor it, don't question. We're not gonna be asking you to tell us you can keep it private. You won't need to uh, to tell anybody. So don't censor yourself. Just write down um, everything that came up to that question. What do I truly want? And um, if nothing came up, just write nothing. It's okay. <laughs> It may take a minute for you to start to think about it and to have things come up. As we went through this process, I talk about setting conscious goals. I don't necessarily just mean setting goals from the mind, from the intellect. That is not conscious for me. What I'm talking about is setting conscious goals that come deeply from your body. And in this process, we are becoming aware and conscious of what our body, what our subconscious is um, telling us. And because our subconscious is so powerful and it's um, most of really our um, way of connecting with reality, but if we're not conscious of it, if we don't have connection with it, we cannot do anything about it. So by relaxing, by going into your body, you gain access to um, subconscious uh, embodied elements and wisdom. And it is a process. It doesn't um, just happen overnight, but I will be talking about setting routines. And so I would invite you, if you choose, to um, include this in your routine. Every day, take a minute or take a few seconds or maybe take an hour to do that simple meditation of breathing and asking yourself, what do I truly want? Okay. So by now, I hope that you wrote a few things down. I would love for you to um, share in the chat if you want to. And um, you don't have to. Like I said, it's private. I'm not going to ask you to be sharing anything that you don't want to, but I would love for you to share. And um, the other thing that I wanted to say is, um, like I said, you have access to this and you have access to me by um, being in this workshop. So I'd love to hear your comments later on through the learning platform. So. Very good. So by now you probably have a few things. And I want to talk about goals because this is just step number one of setting goals. This is not just, this is not your goals yet. Okay. Um, so look at, look back at your piece of paper, look at what you um, wrote down. And from my experience, uh, because like I said, I've been working with people for over 15 years and I've been working with myself, number one. Um, Oftentimes when we ask, what are your goals? The answer is, for example, I don't want to have my neck hurt or I want to stop having my back hurt me every day or 
I want to um, stop feeling so fatigued and so so ex you know um, so um, in pain in my body all right so notice about those goals they are first of all in negative I want to stop or I don't want to it's not an answer to the question right because the question is what do I want um, number two those goals are sort of smallish and I don't want to tell you that your neck pain is not important I understand because of the power of pain when we have um, pain in our body it takes 99% of our conscious awareness right it takes our uh, attention and that's what it's designed to do all right it's very important for us to survive to have pain so we're not trying to stop having pain but we're trying to become more conscious aware and more in control of those sensations so if you um, setting your goals such as I want my neck to not hurt um, you may get that um, I hope you would I hope you will but you may discover in the process that your life hasn't changed for the better at all that you just have less neck pain but uh, maybe now you have back pain or now maybe you still feel fatigued and discouraged and your life sucks okay not saying that your life sucks I hope your life's beautiful <laughs> truly hope so but this is an example so what we're gonna do with our goals be um, honest with yourself look at them and I want you to underline all those that are negative and then I want you to put an asterisk or a star by those that are positive by positive I mean for example I want to thrive in my life I want to feel energized I want to feel full of vitality I want to feel a uh, strong I want to run 10 miles <laughs> it's a very concrete goal actually I like those or I want to be able to run every day for 30 minutes without pain you see this is a positive goal because you are actually answered the question what you want versus what you don't want simple it's super simple you know what I'm talking about so I also want you to look at those goals that are maybe negative like I want to stop feeling pain in my neck and ask yourself what's behind it why do you want to stop feeling pain in your neck maybe because um, you want to be able to exercise without having that pain right or maybe uh, because you want to be able to uh, focus on your studies or your uh, work better without being distracted okay um, so for example why do you want to not have back pain maybe because you want to exercise more and you want to get stronger and healthier you want to achieve uh, some measurable goals like like I said running for 30 minutes a day so um, cross off all the goals that are negative and instead write something positive okay so like I said uh, instead of I want to feel less pain in my neck write down for example it's my example I want to be able to focus on my studies and excel in what I do Mm -hmm. simple you can do that and you can always come back to this I'm not going to ask you to do all of that stuff right now this is just a process um, because without setting conscious positive goals um, we're just never going to get anywhere with our uh, process of empowering our body we're going to be stuck in the loop the goal of this and the goal for me is for you to step out of that vicious circle of always trying to reduce symptoms and reduce pain instead step out into a bigger vision 
all right um so you can come back to that so what i want you to do is have at least you know two or three positive goals um step number three once you have those i want you to make them bigger okay so for example i want to feel healthy how about exaggerating that i want to feel uh, like I'm thriving in my life, like I'm on the top of my game, I'm serving, contributing, I am uh, full of vitality and I'm an example for others in this. Yeah, it's kind of exaggerated vision of that. So play around with that. Become a little, you know, creator. Write it down and there's no censoring. I'm not going to be reading that. I'm not going to be making you... Uh, share that with me unless you want to which i would love for you of course and then um step number three and we're going to be going with that we're going to actually uh, do the step number three together as a practice okay step number three will be to visualize that goal so today you're gonna pick one and if you're not ready completely, if you don't have this huge, humongous goal yet that you can see and feel in your body, don't worry about it. <laughs> it's a practice. This is just a little primer and this is just a little roadmap for you where you can start going. OK. Um, I will offer you um, ways to um, refine this process and go deeper and become more apt in um, creating this um, self-empowerment, self-healing routine, okay? So don't worry about it if you don't have everything down yet, all right? Awesome. So we got the goals. We want to make them positive, and then we want to exaggerate them, make them bigger so that you can really be like, wow, I'm getting energized. I'm like getting emotional about it. Let's bring emotion into our goals. This will set you on the route of really uh, creating your life that you even haven't dreamt about. OK, and uh, a life that will be in inspiring for you and inspiring for others. So I hope that's what you want. You've probably been drawn to me because that's what you want. I trust that. So um, what we're going to do now, um, I'm going to kind of sw switch gears a little bit um, because we've been talking about how to learn and um, about our bodies, how to connect with our bodies. Remember, we had those four um, principles that I um, really like to emphasize. Um, so that was understanding the way the body communicates with us and enhancing, expanding that range of sensations that we allow ourselves to feel and understanding that all those sensations are ways of our body talking to us and giving us information. And that will be very important for your um, the techniques that I'm going to be teaching you uh, in a minute. So um, remembering sensations, of course, like pain, um, hunger, thirst, but also positive sensations of being energized, of being um, um, excited, of feeling expansive. So make it your goal if you can and if you want to expand and um, amplify uh, the range of sensations you allow yourself to feel in your body, okay? And then we talked about feeling and seeing and uh, experiencing our body as a connected whole, using breathing to connect and not forcing breathing, but using our awareness of breath and using visualization. And then we set our goals. Once we have our goals that are positive, we can go into uh, a bit of a self-treatment practice. And um, so, like I said, I've been a therapist for 15 years. And uh, one thing that I've learned is that people who actually take things in their hands and who do self-treatment every day, 
um, win. Okay, they win at this game of feeling empowered in their body. So I have a little tool I want to show you and I understand you may not have it with in your home today, but I'm going to um, tell you a little bit about how to get a bowl like this and why we use it. Okay. And then I'm going to teach you um, simple ways of using it today. Okay. So if you don't have a ball, if you don't have anything like this, um, it's okay. If you do, fantastic. Um, you can take a minute and grab it, you know. And let me talk a little bit about uh, what this is and why we use it. So we love uh, with the form of therapy that I, I do, which is called myofascial release um, or fascial release. Uh, we love to use those four to six inch inflatable balls. So you'll see here if I can point it to the camera. This ball has um, a vent, an opening in it. So this is important. So if you're getting a ball like this, I will really emphasize that you want to get uh, a one a ball with a vent so that you can inflate it and deflate it. And the size of it is about four to six inches. It can be bigger. Uh, usually I wouldn't go smaller because it will be hard to use. Okay. And in your um, worksheet that I attached here, you have a description of the ball as well. So you don't have to remember everything either. Right. So um, I'm actually here looking at the chat and seeing if there's any questions. Oh yeah. So how do you get the ball? right? Where do you get it? Um, so the ball is actually, you can buy it anywhere you want to. You can go to your sporting goods store. You can go to your Walmart or Target or whatever you like to go to. Um, you, sometimes they have them in pharmacies, you know, you'll find balls like these. They can be actually bigger. It doesn't matter. It can be maybe even eight inches. Um, you don't want to get a huge ball because then it will be hard to use. It's not going to be uh, as beneficial. Ideally four to six inch in diameter with a vent. Okay. Let me see if I can point it to the camera here. Okay. Having a little trouble with that. So this ball has a vent in it. And then uh, what I have too is a bike pump. And you see, I have a little attachment to that bike pump, a little needle attachment. That's what it's called, right? Needle attachment. You can get it online. You can get it in a bike store. Uh, most people have a pump. Um, so why we want to have a pump is that because you're learning to listen to your body, you're actually going to be learning how much pressure to apply to different areas of your body. So you want to be able to regulate the amount of air because sometimes you may need more. Sometimes you may need less. But you know, if you just have a ball today, I will be fantastic. If you don't, you can grab a uh, towel. You can grab anything that you have handy, like a blanket or something that you can sort of roll or even a piece of uh, clothing, you know? So um, just to kind of give you a little um, a sense of what it will be to work with this. But if you have a ball, go grab it and um, come back, come on back. Um, so like I said, uh, there is, uh, instructions about the ball are in the worksheet as well. So you can, um, you can read them again and, um, also, you know, try to find one. I, if you cannot find one in a store, what you can also do is go on Amazon or some other online store and get a, uh, brand uh, that's called Miracle Ball. Okay, so just like Miracle Ball, you see those balls are actually pretty miraculous the way they help, help us heal chronic pain. Um, and um, I just want to encourage you, not, you don't have to read the booklet that comes with it. We have a different technique that I'm going to teach you. So I'm going to encourage you to just use our technique here for these purposes. So what are we going to do with the ball? So uh, we learned a bit about connecting with our body and um, finding areas um, and 
I would say we didn't, oh no, I'm so sorry, we haven't learned yet about how to find areas in the body that we need to work with, but we will right now. So this is the second part of this workshop. Um, I'm going to teach you simple techniques. So once you have your goals and you can repeat that practice of creating goals, um, I'm going to uh, have you start working with some areas in your body that are tight, taut, tender, restricted, sore. Okay. Um, so once you have your ball, we usually use it, use it on the floor. Um, if it's possible, some people are not able to get on the floor safely. So I want you to really be, um, mindful of your body and your body's limitations. Okay. So never uh, do anything that compromises your ability to, you know, stand up and, and get yourself uh, up from the floor safely. Um, you can use, you can be on, um, laying on the couch, firmer surface is better because when you're going to be using the ball, you're going to be laying on it, um, and using that pressure to, uh, press into your body. So you don't want to have the ball sink in into like a soft mattress. All right. So that is important. And, um, and those principles are going to be uh, in the worksheet as well. So uh, don't worry if you don't remember everything, you don't have to write it down. Um, so we're going to be using this whole process of listening to our body. Uh, we're going to be applying those principles now that we talked about visualization, breathing, uh, feeling sensations and using our sensations as guidance and feeling our body as a connected system. Um, so we also are going to really emphasize connecting with our goals and being able to visualize those goals. So this is a whole process for your mind and for your body. Um, this is not just to stretch you out or press on a hard, tight area. This is a whole process of reconnecting with your body and inviting it to be your guide in your self treatment. Okay. So let me give you our principles that we have, that we always stick to. Okay. I talked about being on the floor and using pressure, but important and write it down. If you can never force through pain. Okay. Never disrespect the limitations and boundaries of your body. That is extremely important. All right. And so, um, if you feel like you're laying on a ball or any other tool that you're using for your self treatment and you start to feel like your body's struggling, it's pushing against you is trying to, you know, really tense up because there's too much pain, soreness, or discomfort. You have to ease up. And that's where your bike pump comes in handy because you can take some air out of the ball. You can also use a pillow and maybe put the pillow on the, on the ball or vice versa, put the ball on the pillow. So you reducing the amount of pressure. So you don't want your body to start to fight you because as we treating our pain and discomfort, if we put too much pressure, the body's going to be tensing up and actually creating more resistance and more pain. So we don't want to get in there, right? We don't want to go there. We want to, um, work with our body, respecting its limitations and respecting its, um, message. Okay. Um, so this is rule number one, never, never force and never force through pain. Um, rule number two, uh, very important. It's, uh, I keep on repeating this to all my clients all the time. They get tired of me. Uh, I have a rule or we have a rule here with this kind of treatment. Five minutes. Okay. This is a five minute therapy. It's good and bad. <laughs> good because you can just do five minutes a day to actually start feeling great over time. Um, but you also have to be strict with yourself to not cheat yourself on time. Okay. 
So as we're going to be working with the ball today, uh, and I'm going to invite you to pick a spot on your body and then apply that pressure of your ball, or you can, like I said, use a towel or a piece of clothing just as a kind of mock-up, um, or you can just lay on the floor. It's okay. Uh, don't worry about it. You'll come back and do this again. But um, as we're going to be doing this, it is essential that we stay for at least five minutes with each technique. And there's many more techniques that I teach. It's not just the ball. Uh, there's other tools and there's stretches. I'm not going to be teach, teaching this in this workshop because we're limited on time. This is a, your roadmap. But with the ball or any other technique that I teach, we stay with it for at least five minutes or more, okay? So our body is a connected system. It's a, uh, what we call the fascia, which is the connective tissue in the body. Uh, when the tissue gets inflamed, it gets hard and tight and restricted and it creates pressure, it creates pain. So I'm not gonna go into more detail into that either because um, I want you to just experience it more than um, sort of talk about the um, theory of it. However, for this connective tissue to release that tension, tightness, restriction, we have to spend time with it. It doesn't respond fast. It takes at least five minutes for the connective tissue to soften and release the pain and restriction. All right? So this is why we have five minutes. So when you self-treating, um, when you're doing your everyday practice, as I will encourage you to do, you are going to, first of all, find a place and um, an area where you can feel comfortable, where you can feel um, free of distractions, uh, free of, um, you know, phones ringing, so you want to turn off your phone, um, free of, you know, having to attend to other things that you really sort of in your own space, in your own zone. It's okay to play music, to have something beautiful around you, like flowers, right? Like candles, whatever it feels like is nourishing your uh, spirit. And whatever it feels like it's keeping you in that space and keeping you secluded, keeping you safe. That's very important, right? So even for the five minutes a day that I will be encouraging you to do, still um, give yourself that gift of finding that sanctuary, that special place uh, where you will be spending your five minutes a day, okay? Um, so it's very important then, again, uh, to reiterate those principles, we are going to be really connecting with our body, feeling it, listening to its guidance, we're going to be never forcing through pain. We're going to be staying with the treatment, the technique, um, the ball for at least five minutes. And um, we're going to be making a commitment to find that um, sanctuary, that place where you can be truly with your body listening. Otherwise, I feel like it's kind of a waste of time. So you are in this process. You signed up for this, you um, came in touch with me. So I feel like you are a person who wants to commit to something bigger, okay? So, um, all right, so we've been talking about principles and um, how, you know, I gave you some uh, basic stuff. Um, so we're gonna do a little guided meditation self-treatment again. Um, so we're going to uh, find an area, I'm going to teach you or guide you in that process of finding an area in your body that needs treatment. And then we're going to be going for five minutes. Um, so I'm going to have you have that experience of five minutes. And um, we're going to be breathing and listening to the sensations uh, and responses in your body. And also, we're going to be keeping the goal that you just created, the positive, powerful, expansive goal in mind, okay? So, um, we're sort of 
using those principles that I've been teaching you, uh, using what I've been teaching you so far in this little five minute therapy um, experience. And so I will encourage you to go through this again and again. And uh, as you devoting that five minutes a day, um, I really want you to um, use those principles, okay? Don't just skip it. Don't just try to do something fast to just like, you know, do it. No, let's actually commit to ourselves to take that time, to take that space and to actually put our attention into our body. Okay. So, um, if you have a bowl like this, let's grab it. If you have a towel or a piece of clothing, we can use it as a mock-up or you can just um, be on the floor or on a couch if you're not able to get on the floor safely, okay? So I'm going to again um, ask you to lay down. If you need to stay seated, it's okay. Um, you can stay in a comfortable position, but ideally you'll be laying down. I'm just using the wall here because I want to be able to um, talk and participate with you. Um, so we're not going to start with the ball. We're just going to um, lay down and take a little deep breath, just gently allowing your body to be filled with air. And expand, exhale, let it all go. Let all the stress and energy that got accumulated through the day go. A few more breaths. Feel your body on the floor, on the couch, on the surface. Connect with that surface. And again, let's scan the body. Imagine you're traveling inside of your body. Breathing in and out. Feel parts of your body, parts of this whole connected system of your body. How are they interacting with each other? And see um, where you can allow that breath to expand from the inside even more. See where you can allow your body to expand, to soften, to welcome the breath. Do it a few times, take a few breaths. And ask yourself, um, is there a place where I cannot reach? Is there a place where I cannot get my breath in? Is there a place that maybe is hurting too much for me? To connect with. Listen to your body's reactions. Breathe. Keep on asking yourself, what am I feeling? Where do I feel it? And you may want to pick one place. You may have a million talking to you and asking attention, but pick a place and use your intuition. If you felt a place that's particularly tight, like for me right now, I feel tightness in my, in my back, okay, between my shoulder blades. So I know what I'm going to do, right? And I'm going to tell you in a minute, but ask yourself, what was my place? And like I said, you may have a million coming up. Uh, there may be a lot of aches and pain in your body. I honor that. But for the sake of this practice, uh, I'm going to ask you to please pick up one place, one area in your body that you want to work with today. Um, and grab your ball if you have one, or grab a, um, like I said, a towel or a piece of clothing. You can roll it up like a mock-up ball. Or just... Um, be aware of that place. So what I'm going to do for myself, and you can do that if you also don't really know, if you have no idea, but you have a bow, you can just follow me. This is going to be a really good area to treat no matter what. 
I'm gonna put my ball behind my back between my shoulder blades, okay? And pretend I'm laying on the floor. I'm just gonna use the wall. So I'm just going to put my ball between my shoulder blades on the spine. So for you, because it's a workshop and um, it's an introductory workshop, uh, you may not know where you want to use the ball, so you can do the same thing as I'm doing. If you have an area like maybe um, your lower back, your, um, the small of your back, or maybe your head's hurting, um, you can put the ball there. Maybe you feel uh, very tight in your legs and you want to lay on your stomach and put a ball on your um, thigh or on your hamstring or on your glutes. You know, it's um, up to you. You may even put the ball under your foot and you will be sitting up for that. So um, I'm not going to teach you um, the particular techniques. I have other videos where I do that. However, um, what I'm going to teach you today is more connecting with your body to reclaim that power of being your own self healer. So listen to your intuition now, take a breath and just pick up one place, don't overthink it. Um, and like I said, you can put your ball between your shoulder blades. It will pretty much feel good for most people. If you're laying on the floor, by the way, on the ball and it's between your shoulder blades, you may want to grab a pillow for your head because I don't want you to be stretching out too hard. Um, so find a position. I'll give you a minute. Just kind of um, decide where you want to be, how you want to be. Get on your ball or your towel um, or your clothing and just uh, Take a few breaths again. Feel your, feel your body and feel your body filling up with air, connecting. So I'm going to guide you through this um, self-treatment meditation. So like I said, my ball is between my uh, shoulder blades on the spine. So I'm going to talk about what I'm feeling, um, but you can just translate it for yourself. So I'm feeling pressure on my spine as I'm, I'm sort of rolling on my ball a little bit just to kind of connect because I don't feel fully connected yet. Okay. I've been talking for an hour, so it's easy to sort of disconnect with our bodies as we're doing that. It's a, a quite a practice to stay connected with the body as you're doing other things. I'm still really working on it. So thank you for your patience. Oh, but allow yourself to settle into the pressure of the ball or your towel. And allowing yourself to let the gravity pull you into the earth, pull you into that pressure of the ball or pressure that you're generating otherwise with a towel and settle down. We're not going to be rolling, moving, massaging or rubbing anything. We're actually going to be applying steady pressure into one area of the body. And we're going to be staying here for five minutes so you get that experience, okay? Very good. So letting your mind go, gently breathing. As you breathe in, allow yourself to be filled up with air, to expand into your skin again. Allow that air to reach to the surface of your skin, to that bubble of your skin. And then as you breathe out, allow the air to come out through the skin, to seep out through the skin 
you're cleansing everything out, breathing in fresh air, light color, if you like colors, allow your imagination go. Visualize something beautiful that makes you feel good. Some people like colors. Some people like to imagine light or maybe a soft texture. Um, I'm moving a little bit about on my ball. I just do it naturally, but I'm not trying to massage. I'm just allowing my body to just play around, but you don't have to move. Just allow yourself to be sinking in, allowing that air to cleanse your body, allowing anything that feels good to appear in your imagination, like a color, light, texture, and connect, reconnect with your body again, feel, where do I feel? soft, relaxed, where do I feel still some tension, breathe into that area and allow all that tension to come out, melt, a beautiful image to have is, you know, that butter melting in the sun, when you have a, a piece of butter you took out of the fridge, it's hard, just like the body, as you put it in the sun, it starts to slowly melt. Or maybe you put it on the stove on low, stove on low fire and it's slowly melting. Imagine and feel your body slowly melting over that pressure. Asking yourself, what am I feeling? What are my sensations? You know? You may feel soreness and pain, but I want you to make that commitment to yourself to expand the range of sensations that you feel from just feeling pain. Where does it feel good? Where does it feel soft and relaxed? Can I find those areas? Focus on those too. Allow your imagination to travel through your body. And there's, this is a very short demonstration, but you can start to really become um, creative with the visualization that you do. Imagining anything positive, anything you like coming into your body as you self-treat and allowing everything negative to come out. So take a few gentle breaths again and I want you to remember what we've been doing in the first part of this workshop. We've been setting goals. Remember a goal that you had, that you wrote down. If you didn't have anything, it's okay. You can just imagine something positive, like feeling great in your body. But bring that goal that you wrote, if you have, um, to your mind and just feel. How would that feel? My goal would be to give you an example. I want to feel vibrant and full of energy so I can share with others. And now I'm just inviting my imagination to see myself in that place. I'm vibrant, healthy, strong. I'm encouraging others to feel good. I feel myself surrounded by uh, beautiful people and we all are expanding and feeling better and better and more vibrant, more energized in our bodies. Every breath in, we're shining and my body's shining, my skin's radiating, colors, light, I feel expansive and full of energy, like I come on the top of the world. Maybe there is something beautiful that I uh, am surrounded with. Oh, I'm seeing myself out on the beautiful meadow with flowers, beautiful sunshine, moisture in the grass, 
my feet are bare and I'm actually feeling that beautiful moisture of the grass under my feet. It feels so good. Whoa, and as I breathe in, I'm filling myself up with this beautiful energy, that visualization, that visual image that I have created. It's my image. You have to use your own, right? This is what came up for me spontaneously. I didn't plan it. I didn't write it down. It just came up. So if I were to be self-treating right now, I would just allow myself to be in my um, quiet place, in my sanctuary on the ball and bring in that beautiful image that I love um, into my mind, seeing it with more and more detail, with more and more color. Okay, good. So we've been actually here for eight minutes. Imagine that. So I'm going to remove my bowl. Okay. Thank you for letting me do a little self treatment for myself as I'm teaching you. Oh, good. So I'm going to ask you to just take a few breaths and you can actually, if you're on the floor on the ball, you can roll yourself in the fetal position, kind of breathing, allowing yourself to come back into your body, bringing some energy back, bringing some connection just to your physical body. You might have traveled out of space. It's good. Bring yourself back to that place that you hopefully imagined where you achieved your goal. Okay. But keep it in mind, don't let it go. Keep it with you. Keep it with you. Put it in your treasure box. Wow, I've experienced that. This can actually now set my day. Or maybe you're doing it at night in the evening so it can set you up for a beautiful sleep. Ah, so as you're coming back to yourself, don't rush it. If you can sit up, you can sit up. I'm going to um, well, give you some suggestions to go forward with this. So, like I said, when I uh, treated people and I uh, would help them with chronic pain, what I found out is that those who actually created strong self-treatment habits were the ones who won, who really changed their lives the most, okay? And uh, so this is not something that you do once and then you're all set. This is just a mini treatment. And I put in a lot of different elements here. This is why you have your worksheet so you can go through it again and again and sort of um, maybe write down your own routine. It will include connecting with your body, setting your goals, and then working with the tools that you have, your ball. Um, and do follow my videos for other self-treatment methods because I have a lot of them I share. So this is not the only one, okay? But uh, what I wanted to say is that you want to also create it as your own. And um, second step, um, I want you to commit to, for the next 21 days to, um, Carve out five minutes a day in your time. You can do it in the morning upon awakening to set up your day, or you can do it in the evening as a routine or in the middle of the day on your lunch break, whenever you want to, um, and set it up as your routine that you're going to be doing for 21 days. Okay. Uh, 21 days is the minimum. It's sort of the time where we start, we start to teach our brain to, and create those positive habits uh, for life. So um, you're going to carve out that five minutes a day and ideally you'll be uh, in your space, in your sanctuary. Make it pretty, make it feel good or if you don't like it pretty, just make it as you like it. Uh, you can play music, you can put some candles or some pictures or sense whatever feels appealing to you okay or it can be just a bare place with the walls around you some people like it that way i honor that however you want to carve out that space and carve out that five minute time period for yourself all right 
So I'm not asking a lot, but um, it's 21 days. So you may actually find it as a challenge to be a challenge, but it's a challenge worth while of your attention and your commitment. Um, so I guarantee you that if you do that for 21 days, your life will change and your relationship with your body will change. So as you're doing your self treatment, always remember to use those principles that we talked about, meaning breathing, connecting with your body as a whole, as a, um, in, in its entirely entirety, excuse my English, uh, as a connected whole. All right. And then we want to, like I said, breathe. We want to use breath. Uh, we also want to um, use the power of our visualization and ability to connect with our body and expand that range of sensations that we feel and allow ourselves to feel. Okay. So you're going to be using that five minutes to do all those things. Maybe you do all of them, maybe not, but the most important one is to remember your goals. So you may want to, if you're an extra overachiever, like I am, <laughs> you may want to carve out a few minutes of your day where you actually set your goals and remember, the goals need to be positive, meaning when in a positive, um, say like, I want to feel uh, full of energy versus I want to feel less pain in my neck. Okay. Set your goals big, let yourself imagine and dream. Don't stop yourself. You are a powerful human being. There's no reason to uh, short change yourself. Set your goals big. The worst thing that will happen is just you won't achieve them, but you won't lose anything. Um, and then um, use the power of visualization. Every time you work with the ball or with your tool or stretch, use that power of visualizing what your body is inside like, and use the power of bringing that positive image, energy, feeling, color, um, light, whatever you like into your self treatment and just imagining that cleansing power of the breath. So I hope those pointers are making sense to you. Like I said, it's all written down in the worksheet, but it also can reach out to me. I feel like it's been a lot of information that I've given you. I wanted to give you some, uh, a roadmap here and there is many more uh, resources that I have for you where you can go deeper. Um, first of all, um, if you feel like you need help with the 21 days, um, I have created a course, uh, online course, uh, that is a 21 day challenge for, um, called find your inner healer. Um, and it's a course that I created because I believe in that power of, um, routine of doing something over and over again, something positive of creating habit. This will set you up for life uh, to be changing your relationship uh, with your body for the positive. So I have um, um, created a special offer for you where you can um, sign up for this course um, at a huge discount. So check it out. It's connected to this course. Um, so I really want to encourage you, you'll be able to communicate with me through that uh, platform as well. If you need help with um, your self treatment, if you want to um, learn more different techniques, definitely that challenge is great for you. There's 21 videos and um, homework assignments um, that you can follow. So 21 mini short videos, not long like this but short where I show you different techniques and I guide you through this process that I've um, outlined here. Um, second thing is you are more than welcome to connect to our private Facebook group. It's completely free. There's no strings attached to that, but there is a lot of videos that I've posted that I've made for you to learn self treatment. And also, um, it's a great place to connect, to ask questions. I do lives where I answer questions. 
um, where um, I'm able to guide you and give you pointers and ideas of what to do. Um, what else? Well, you are actually going to be able to um, communicate with me, ask me questions and ask questions to other members of the group who are doing the same work as you are. So if you're suffering from chronic pain, if you feel like you don't have control over your body, if you want to learn more, just join us on Facebook and definitely look into the 21 day challenge because it's designed to be guiding you through that process of setting your goals for 21 days. So I hope you've learned things from this workshop. Um, go back to it, rewatch it, try out the techniques, get your ball and your pump, okay? And set yourself up for success. Uh, it was such a pleasure to connect with you. Uh, please stay in touch. You have all the information. Join the Facebook group, it's completely free. Uh, join the 21 day challenge. I think it's a really good uh, starter. And I'm here for you. My name is Monica, Empower TV Online Courses. And it was such a pleasure connecting with you all. Please reach out and I wish you the best of success.